please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. After making a splash in the retail market, Baba Ramdev's Patanjali has now gone online. The Haridwar headquartered firm has tied up with eight e-commerce partners earlier today, including Flipkart, Amazon, Paytm, Bit, Big Basket, you name it, they've tied up with them. And this will ensure that Patanjali's digital footprint goes beyond just a website come shopping portal of its own. CNBC TV is Ashpreet Sethi and Priya Shet find out if Patanjali will now disrupt the e-retail industry. Find out. Baba Ramdev cranked up his war cry against multinational companies even as he launched Patanjali Ayurved.net, an online platform for the company's Swadeshi products. Baba Ramdev did not miss out on this opportunity to go ahead and lash out at multinationals and say go ahead and boycott them. But at the same time, he has tied up with multinationals like Amazon India and those who have private investments like Flipkart, Paytm and others. Ironically, Baba Ramdev has also revealed his plans of going ahead and becoming international with the presence of over 20 countries. The eight online companies that have been roped in to carry Patanjali's products, however, remain indifferent to his comments on MNCs and in admiration of the company's success and its future potential. Some of the sellers on our platform have been selling Patanjali products for more than a year now. The response obviously has been very good. So now Patanjali has partnered with so many online companies and Paytm Mall also that it'll become officially available, which is sort of a very master stroke in terms of distribution. And Patanjali's demand and cap capitalizing on that to build a distribution online is a great asset. We've, uh, we've, we've doubled our business uh, over the last one year. I think from now to next year, it will grow three times. And I think that's really what we are setting ourselves up to. Meanwhile, Baba Ramdev was quick to reassure his brick-and-mortar distributors and retailers that they will not suffer any losses because of this online foray. Patanjali will not be discount. First, we have 25-50% of products that are sold. That's why it will not be retailers or exclusive stores. But experts point out that while Patanjali and Baba Ramdev may have changed the rules of the game in the brick-and-mortar retail industry, they will have a tough task pushing higher online sales without hurting the brick-and-mortar network. With Ashpreet Sethi in New Delhi, in Mumbai, Priya Shet. So there you have it, Patanjali products now just a click away. So let's try and delve into the phenomenon of Patanjali. What makes this company, which barely had revenues of 450 crores five years ago today, has revenues of well over 10,000 crore rupees. We have a power pack lineup to throw some light on this phenomenon. We are now joined by Milan Sarvate, founder and CEO of Increate Value Advisors. Sunil Alag, well-known business and marketing consultant, also joins us on the show. Brand guru Harish Bijur joins in on Skype. And also Devashish Mukherjee, partner at AT Kani. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much for joining us here on this special. But before I come to you, let me just throw it to my co-anchor Priya Shet for a quick analysis at Patanjali's meteoric expansion so far. What a story this has been, Priya. Well, going by the revenue numbers, Baba Ramdev's Patanjali Ayurveda seems to have grown quite rapidly in a very short span of time. The company which clocked revenues of over 10,000 crore rupees in FY17 has been working towards doubling revenues on a year-on-year -year basis. Now, going by the rate of growth, Patanjali is aiming to hit revenues of close to 1 lakh crore rupees over the next five years. And in order to achieve this kind of scale, the company has been investing aggressively and plans to plough in about 10,000 crore rupees over the next three to five years. Now, global investors too want to be a part of this growth story and have been pursuing Patanjali Patanjali to allow them to invest in the company. Of the 50 odd categories that Patanjali has been present in, the brands that have really stood out over the last couple of years include the likes of Dant Kanti, Kesh Kanti, Herbal Soap as well as Honey. And the company already has an annual production capacity of 50,000 crore and has several more manufacturing units planned in Noida, Nagpur as well as in Indore. Now products from its Nagpur plant will be exported to over 20 countries over the next few years. Now coming to the mega e-commerce foray, Patanjali 
Patanjali has tied up with eight leading online players, including the likes of Flipkart, Paytm Mall, Amazon, Big Basket, and many more, to improve the kind of reach as well as distribution. Now, we also learned that the company is looking at growing its online business tenfold to about 100 crore on a month on month basis from about 11 crore presently through these tie ups. Patanjali also expects about 15% of its overall turnover to come from these online sales over the next few years. Now, to maintain this kind of growth trajectory, Patanjali has launched a series of products and there are several more planned, including the likes of apparels, textiles, diapers and even solar equipment. With that, it's back to you. All right there, Priya. So don't just get impressed by Patanjali's turnover today, which is over 10,000 crore rupees, because the company is eyeing 100,000 crore rupees. That's the next target, the next bastion for, uh, uh, for, uh, for Patanjali to, uh, to overcome. Now, let me introduce my guests and bring them into the conversation. Suning Alag, let me start with you. You know, usually we don't see, uh, you know, sort of new players entering the FMCG uh, space and sort of, you know, disrupting the market in the fashion in which Patanjali has done. Because usually you associate a lot of entry barriers with the FMCG space, high cost of, you know, you know just brand awareness, uh, quality control, a complicated uh, supply chain. Despite all of that, Patanjali has grown at this meteoric pace. Help us understand, help our viewers understand the big takeaway. What is the big take? What has impressed you most about Patanjali when you've seen this company over the last five years? Look, what has impressed me most is the fact that as far as they are concerned, they started off as herbal. And herbal products was not really a big mm -hmm. thing in India maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago. And they've done an Amul, if I might add, to the FMCG <coughs> sector. Mm -hmm. When Amul came in also with Dr. Kurian, he said, mm -hmm. I am not interested in MNC. I will give you good quality milk at perhaps 30% or 40% less than what the multinationals are charging or anyone else will charge. And I will ensure the quality. Mm -hmm. And I think he's mm -hmm. taken that same model forward with herbal products. According to me, I think now Patanjali mm -hmm. is just running for turnover with jeans and stuff like that, which is going to destroy that brand completely as far as I'm concerned, because we've seen it all over the world. When you mm -hmm. get out of your core business and extend it all over, then there's nothing left of Patanjali herbal anymore. Now it is, you want to buy underwear. It's like Amul selling underwear and wanting to get turnover for the heck of it. Then I think that's the danger that it's getting mm -hmm. into. And if they are expecting 15% turnover from getting onto the net, look, I mean, <laughs> I've sold biscuits. How many people go on to the net to buy biscuits or noodles or whatever? You barely get 1% or 2%. No, mm -hmm. the only hope is normally companies which do not have the distribution system that Patanjali has already set up go on to Snapdeal and Amazon mm -hmm. and everything else. But because of all the other kind of products like jeans and X and Y, <coughs> that's mm -hmm. where they will get the turnover from the net mm -hmm. and not from, you don't go to the net to buy soap, for sure. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but this is my mm -hmm. reading. Right. And I think they're making one little error in extending that brand to categories which they should not be in. All right, thank you for throwing open the debate, uh, uh, you know, so nicely there. Uh, uh, Mr. Alag, uh, you know, saying that the fact that the manner in which uh, Patanjali is now diversifying his business somewhere, is it losing, you know, it's uh, the brand which was basically a company that was based on Ayurvedic products. So let me get the brand expert also, uh, you know, on this to comment on that. Harish Bijur, the big takeaway, the big, you know, the company tried to position itself as a, you know, as, as an Indian manufacturer, you know, they tried to evoke this whole Swadeshi story around it. What is what will be so Swadeshi when they get into diet snacks, diapers, solar equipment manufacturing? Is Patanjali now risking diluting its brand through its sort of this brisk diversification drive that they are on? You know, the first point is that uh, Patanjali Ayurved is a big market disruptor. And uh, Baba Ramdev has created market disruption by taking a route which is called Ayurveda. And he's made Ayurveda come back into fashion once again with 10,560 crores as turnover. Well, the error ahead uh, seems to be, uh, you know, forays into categories which are not core competence areas. I think the next one, right? But I do believe he's going to really focus more on the Ayurvedic products. And if he does focus with gusto on that, I think this turnover can actually quadruple over the next five years because that is the real potential 
of the product, which is non-chemical, pure, organic, Ayurvedic, green, and with nature. Tell Priya to take this essentially pans out. My colleague Priya Sheth is also joining me from our Mumbai studio. Priya? Well, Ron, uh, we, we have spoken about the disruptors as far as uh, Patanjali Ayurveda and the FMCG market is concerned. But of course, let me bring in uh, Devashish Mukherjee at this point in time. Uh, Mr. Mukherjee, you've conducted a survey with regards to emerging consumers and the kind of consumer behavior uh, going forward. But of course, you found about 72% of the Indian respondents want a brand that will do good to the world. And of course, you've cited Patanjali as one example of a brand uh, that is really uh, you know, uh, emerging as a result of this uh, black Mind, uh, trust, faith, uh, whatever you call it. Uh, uh, run us through what do you think uh, you know, this will hold for Patanjali going forward? How is this changing for the industry at large? Yeah, thanks Priya. Uh, that's exactly what our study is pointing out and I'd like to say this is a fact which is very, very specific to India that almost double the number of respondents which is almost 70 to 75 compared to 30 to 35 globally actually say that they will buy products at a premium if the companies are more uh, socially minded or doing good from an overall community perspective and this is a very specific input which has come uh, i can't call it a trend because then everybody would be uh, going by that but this is something we believe will become a trend so to your question priya we actually do believe this has been helping Patanjali grow where it is, other than the fact which some of the other panelists have talked about that the price and the value equation is right. But all things remaining same, uh, we believe uh, there is a perception around uh, the trustability, uh, the fact that they are doing good to the communities and a whole host of perceptions around that uh, which is benefiting them. So the short answer and the long answer is yes, uh, they will benefit from that going forward. And that's linked to some of the brand questions which are being asked and answered. Right, let me bring in uh, Milin Sarvati at this point in time. Uh, pricing, branding and Baba Ramdev seem to be the three biggest factors that are drawing uh, people to Patanjali. Would you agree with that? How do you see this panning out in the FMCG market? Uh, I feel that uh, the beginning was made by his uh, focus on uh, Ayurveda. And uh, he has used that very effectively to spread into other categories with a stated objective of pricing everything uh, at least 20 to 30 percent. Uh, below the competition. But I feel that in the long run, this kind of discount pricing has to be sustained by him. While uh, uh, Patanjali discloses his turnover at over 10,000 crores, he doesn't disclose the margin. And there is room to believe that a large part of this turnover is of uh, commodities like ghee or honey, where his margins are not going to be large. So the concern I have is uh, while he tries to scale up, while he has desires and dreams, at what stage does the cash crunch of growth uh, strike him? How does he scale up uh, with uh, a low profit margin? He is also investing hugely into manufacturing capacity. Uh, I think we have to keep in mind that he has to run a profit and loss account and not a receipts and payments account. So I think the reality will sometime uh, hit him. So his pricing, I do not know to what extent yeah. it is sustainable over a long term. All right. In fact, Mr. Sarvate, uh, CLSA had done a report on Patanjali uh, in June uh, 2017 where they had uh, sort of, you know, had conversations with the top management where the management said that, uh, that, that their EBITDA margins currently is at about 20 percent. So they have disclosed that. But again, I mean, uh, that is something CLSA has reported. But Harish Bijur, I want to take, you know, I want to get you on a point that, uh, you know, Mr. Mukherjee made about, about, about the trustability of a brand, saying that Patanjali has managed to create that trust, uh, their consumers, their followers, their worshippers almost, you know, trust Patanjali as a brand. But do you think that this is also premised on Patanjali demolishing the trust of some of the other brands, the MNCs? So they're almost pushing this, you know, into, into this sort of zero-sum game. So, you know, my trust can only be enhanced at the, you know, at the cost of sort of, you know, bringing down the trustability of some other brand. How do you sort of weigh in on this conundrum? You know, uh, Patanjali, Baba Ayurved, Ramakrishna, everybody, I mean, you know, have actually created a very positive trust story and a trust mark for Ayurveda in India. Uh, Dabar has attempted it in the past. Many other guys in the Indian market have attempted it, but not with the kind of gusto that they, Patanjali Ayurved has been able to do. 
Uh, I see it being done fundamentally because Patanjali Ayurved is a 100% Ayurvedic uh, company. It is not an also-ran company. Uh, there are three kinds of companies which make Ayurvedic products in the country today. One is the big multinational corporation, which is also copying exactly what Baba Ramdev is doing. But they're not complete Ayurvedic product companies. And therefore, the trust factor is possibly 20 on 100. Then there are companies which are making 100% Ayurvedic products, which is, let's say, uh, Baba Ramdev and Co. They have 100% of the trust. So it's an it's a it's a zero or hundred game, you know. Uh, you need to be either fully with Ayurveda or fully against Ayurveda, and the two uh, cannot the twin don't meet. And uh, when they don't meet, there is humongous success for the player who's the disruptor, and the disruptor today is Baba Ramdev. Right. He is the, clearly the disruptor. Before I take a break, let me just quickly bring in Debashish also on one point that, you know, that the AT Kani report talks about, you know, you know you've analyzed the kind of users, I mean, e-commerce users, and, and here with their, with this, this mega e-commerce foray, Patanjali will now also try to woo many of the young buyers. Do you think that's going to work for them? What, what does your experience tell you? Yeah, I think uh, the e-commerce to woo young users and to partially uh, answer a point earlier, I, I do think even for grocery, e-commerce is increasingly becoming an important channel. And in a recent piece of work we did, almost 50% of the consumer companies as well as the retailers are actually thinking of moving into subscription models, etc., etc., through e-commerce. So I would not underestimate e-commerce for their kinds of categories at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Sunil, uh, you know, what's also interesting is the way in which they have gone about advertising themselves. Yeah, because usually, you know, we associate high advertising marketing costs when it comes to FMCG companies, Sunil. But here, when you look at their advertising spend, as far as FY16 is concerned, these numbers are slightly dated. Uh, their advertising spend is about 6%, which is, which is far below... Uh, some of their competitors. Of course, last year, you know, you know, they've been more, more uh, on, a, on an advertising blitzkrieg. But interestingly, do you feel that Patanjali is now showing the world really the power of the word of the mouth, so to speak? No, I think, please try and understand, look, I mean, I don't know what everybody seems to be talking about, only Patanjali herbal, Patanjali herbal. When I began in the, when I began my conversation was, look at what they're getting into. To get to that 20,000 crores, is that right? If tomorrow Tata started saying, okay, I'm going to make everything under the sun and I want to double my turnover, it would work. But that would be the end of Tata as a trusted brand. Amul decides to make underwear also and increase their turnover. I completely disagree with everybody on the panel who says that's the way Patanjali should go. Look, they have, Amul is also around 20, 30,000 crores, but they've stuck to the core. What I see right now is the stuff that... They, will it be 15% on the net? I'm willing to challenge the entire panel here. Will it be 15% on two years if they stop selling jeans and everything else, which is what people buy, and mm -hmm. they stick to their core? They won't. So let's be real right now, rather than... Mm -hmm. They've done a damn good job. It's a fantastic brand. They've mm -hmm. done a terrific job. But if they go the route they are going in now to achieve 20,000 crores, I think they're going to dilute Patanjali completely. Okay then it's no longer the brand that they set out to achieve. And I, I'm running away right now, and I'm sure Harish and everybody else will be able to have it growing. Of course, on the net, it's growing. But what is growing on the net? Are jeans growing? Is soaps <coughs> growing? Yeah. Everybody's joining the bandwagon of being yeah. on the net. You'll have 2 3% so, on the net, sure. You have so, to be present. But to say 15% so will come from so Dant Kanti and, and herbal soap, I completely disagree. Yeah. Completely. That's so, also, so it's about the question time that we will somebody told when... Patanjali, stick to so, what, is, what you're good at and don't go. Less is, is more. Any cost Less is more. Very easy. Less is more, yes. Less is more is something that many yeah. auto companies talk about. Yeah, Perhaps this right. is something that even uh, Patanjali needs to think, uh, you know, you know, think uh, deeply about. Is Patanjali trying to bite more than it Would can chew? That's the question soap? we answer when we come Would back you buy a Samsung after the short soap commercial tomorrow morning? break. Come we'll on. come to you. Yes, absolutely. Let's just quickly slip into a break. We'll be back in a moment.
Welcome back. You are with us on our very special show, The Patanjali Empire, and we have with us a power-packed uh, panel. My first question is for Milind Sarvate of Increate Value Advisors. Uh, you know, one big challenge that Patanjali has faced over the last couple of years is growing its general trade network. And that's something that established players like HUL and several other uh, players have established at this point in time. What do you think uh, this online foray will help? Will it help it boost the kind of general trade presence of the network that it has? Uh, I doubt because uh, general trade and online uh, are completely different propositions. I also feel I agree with uh, the panelists, uh, panelists that uh, expecting 15% from online is going to be difficult. Uh, online plus uh, uh, general trade could be a combination on, on the lines of the click and mortar model, which uh, future consumer is uh, trying out. But uh, to expect that put products on the online and expect them to be sold through general, uh, through, through some kind of a connect with the consumer, that is a little too ambitious. Having said that, also in the general trade, uh, it's not easy to build a franchise overnight. I think the scaling of which uh, Patanjali is trying out, it calls for a much larger investment by the trade into its uh, franchise. And uh, there are stories of uh, distributors uh, not really uh, benefiting from uh, the huge scaling up. So earning the uh, earning some kind of trade equity has not been that easy for Patanjali. There is an initial exuberance associated with the brand. But at some stage, profitability kicks in even for the distributors. And uh, I feel that the equity of various brands that Patanjali has launched it is varying. In some products, he has a very strong equity and there would be a trade pool for those products. And in some of the newer products and some of, yeah. as, as uh, Sunil rightly mentioned, there are some ambitious uh, right. mm -hmm. forays. In those, the, the equity may be yeah. slow and yeah. general trade may be difficult to build. Will not be. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. Point taken. Harish Bijur, uh, you know, uh, the point that uh, Sunil made before the break was, are they trying to do too much and is that going to dilute brands? So that is... You know, that is more in terms of its diversification on a, on a product, uh, uh, you know, standpoint. But do you feel also, because we associate Swadeshiness with, uh, you, you know, with Patanjali, here they are tying up with these e-tailers. Many of them are, are, are at the end of the day, foreign-owned. Uh, secondly, they are now looking at, you know, talking about 20 countries. Is that also, do you think, net-net, it may affect brand, it, it, may, it may affect uh, the brand of, uh, of Patanjali going forward? I think we've lost. I think we've lost uh, uh, Harish there. Milan, if you could perhaps take that question. I mean, you know, you know, the, the, this whole blitzkrieg pace of expansion in products and geographies. It, are would, they harming two, brand Patanjali in the long run? I would. I would say two things. First of all, I feel the value of uh, Baba Ramdev and Patanjali to the FMCG industry also lies in its uh, in his mm -hmm. uh, his his desire to think big. I doubt if there has been many. There have been many players who have thought as big as he has done. Talk in terms of 10,000, 20,000 crores, and one lakh crores. So by his sheer bigness of his uh, dream, I think he has enthused a lot of people, and that is something different for this uh, industry. Having said that, I feel exporting to 20 countries, exporting to Indian diaspora present world over, that is not so difficult. But positioning Indian brands completely to non-Indians overseas is going to be difficult. If he wants to notch a presence in 20 countries, that's not difficult. You can send a container to each of the 20 countries and you are present in those countries. But to build a significant franchise, I think you will have to work, uh, work hard quite a lot. Uh, having uh, that kind of an right. international presence may not really impact the Indian uh, play. If at all, it would be uh, positive yeah, because of export quality products. Lots of questions then as far as the Patanjali phenomenon is concerned. We here, of course, on CNBC TV 18, we will continue to track the incredible rise and going forward, whether Patanjali will continue to grow at this breathtaking pace. Uh, all my panelists, Milit Sarvate, Mr. Sunil Alag, Harish Bijur, and Devashish Mukherjee, thank you very much for joining us on this special show. With that, we've got to wrap up uh, this special broadcast, but stay tuned. I'll be back in moments with What's Hot. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>